Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. So, you just hit 120, your character looks like you just walked out of the thrift store, and now you're asking, what's next? In this video, I wanted to answer that question. Its main focus will be gearing up your character for raids and whatnot, but I'll also include some fun side things you can do upon reaching 120. I guess the best way to do this would be to list all of the daily and weekly things you should be doing if your goal is to gear up quickly. Your first objective should be to unlock world quests since they lead to a bunch of other stuff. You do this by getting your main three factions to friendly, which is the Proudmoore Admiralty, Storm's Wake, and the Order of Embers for the Alliance, and the Zandalari Empire, Talanji's Expedition, and Voldenai for the Horde. You can do this pretty easily just by doing a few story quests in each zone. These offer you a bunch of different rewards such as Azerite for your amulet, ward resources for your mission and research tree, and of course gear. The gear you get will scale depending on your character's eye level, so these will be pretty vital for that initial gearing process. They start at eye level 290 and max out at around 330 at the time that this video was made but anything can proc more eye levels to Warforge or Titanforge, so they definitely have the potential to be upgrades even at higher gear levels. And daily, you should also get something called an Emissary Quest. These vary in rewards, sometimes it's gear, and other times it's gold, Azerite, or resources. How they work is they'll ask you to do three or four quests for a certain zone or faction, for example, for in Drustfar, and once you complete them, you go to your Emissary NPC for that faction to collect your reward. You can find them by looking for the yellow question mark in their respective zone. If you still have trouble though, I'll have a link to each vendor in the description. You should always do them though, since they also give reputation, which also leads to gear, but I'll save that for the end of the video. And, as of September 4th, you should also see a world boss quest pop up on your map. These are purple in quality, they're selected randomly, and are only doable once per week. Very similar to Legion's system if you played that expansion. They drop a base eye level 355 piece of gear, and they should be one of the first things you should knock out upon hitting 120, since there isn't an item level lockout tied to them. Simply look for a group in the group finder, and you should get into one pretty easily since they're all on auto-invite. Make sure that you pick up a seal of war-torn fate from your main city before heading out though, because these are the bonus roll tokens for BFA. You can get two per week from this NPC in the transmog station in Boralus for the Alliance, and for the Horde, it's also the transmog shop in the Grand Bazaar. You turn in either gold, marks of honor, or war resources, and these world bosses might be good candidates to use them. You'll definitely want to save one for the Warfront world boss though, because they're dropping eye level 370 loot right now, which is heroic altier level. If your faction controls the Warfront, you can pay a visit to the Arathi Highlands to find a world quest for a boss. For the Alliance, you kill Doom's Howl, and if you're Horde, you kill the Lion's Roar. You get the introduction quest for Warfronts at level 120 from your main city after you've unlocked world quests. Basically how they work is one faction controls the Warfront, and the other one has to do turn-ins to mount a war effort to take control themselves. There are four stages. The Alliance controls the keep, and the Horde is gathering resources to attack, and once they get enough, it moves to stage 2, where the Horde can queue up for a Warfront scenario to take control of the keep. They're successful, so stage 3, it's the Alliance gathering resources this time to take the keep back. And once they have enough, the Alliance can then attack in a scenario for stage 4, and from here it just keeps cycling. These turn-ins require gold, resources, profession items, and so on, and in return, you get some reputation, Azerite, and you also fill up a progress bar to launch that Warfront. You'll also get a quest to win the Warfront, which gives you an eye level 370 cash, only completable by the attacking side once that progress bar fills up and the scenario portion of the Warfront begins. So, in summary, you have a chance at 370 loot from a world boss if you control the Warfront, 
and you also have a quest that gives you a 370 cash if you complete the attacking scenario once that bar fills up. In addition to all of this though, you also have some rare spawns and normal quests if you control the zone. You unlock these shortly after your little introduction quest, and one of them gives an eye level 340 gear cache, and the rest give you azurite or war resources. They're pretty simple, just go to certain locations to kill 20 enemies, and as for the rare spawns, you can kill these once per cycle. There's around 30 total, as you can see from this map from Wowhead. I'll have a link to this in the description if you want to pull it up. These guys always drop Azerite, but they also have a chance to drop some 340 plus loot, so it's a really nice option for gearing up quickly. They also drop mounts, pets, and toys, so they're definitely worth killing. And aside from all of that, you of course have dungeons that can give you some gear as well. We have four difficulties, Normal, Heroic, Mythic, and Mythic Keystone, otherwise known as Mythic Plus. Normals are repeatable infinitely, Heroics are on a daily lockout, Mythics on a weekly, and Mythic Plus repeatable infinitely, as long as you have a Keystone. There are 10 dungeons in total, and the level of loot that they give goes up the higher difficulty that you do. Heroic dungeons do have a minimum eye level requirement of 305. At level 120, Normal drops eye level 310 gear, Heroics drop eye level 325, Mythic has 340s, and Mythic Plus varies depending on what level you do. If you don't know how these work yet, after completing a normal Mythic, you get an item called a Mythic Keystone, which you put into a pedestal at the beginning of the dungeon to start a timed Mythic Plus run. The dungeon you get is selected randomly. And as for the loot, here's a handy chart that lists all of it out. As you can see, it starts at eye level 345 at level 2, and caps out at 370 at levels 10 and higher. In addition to all of this, you also get a weekly chest that gives you some loot depending on the highest level mythic you completed the previous week. It's about 5 to 10 eye levels higher than your normal mythic plus loot, not counting warforging. Speaking of which, since Azerite armor has a base eye level and can't warforge at all, they treat it a little differently. Here's another chart. As you can see, it starts at 340 at level 2, and maxes out at 385 at level 10 or higher, and it's the same for the weekly chest. This is the only activity that you can really spam, so this will be one of your main ways of gearing up. It doesn't have an eye level requirement since it's done through the pre-made group finder, but people generally look for an average eye level of 335 to 340-ish. Personally, I think you can start doing them at 325-ish if you know the mechanics, but you might have trouble getting into groups. And after dungeons, we of course have raiding. The first one, and the only one that's out at the time this video was made, is Aldir, which is located right here in this giant blood hole in Nazmir. If you're watching this video near its release, they're kind of staggering Aldir, Everything in both Normal and Heroic opened on the 4th of this month, and one week later, Mythic Mode opens, along with Raid Finder Wing 1, then on the 25th, Raid Finder Wing 2 unlocks, and finally, two more weeks later, on the 9th of October, the third and final Raid Finder Wing unlocks. The eye levels awarded are 340 plus for Raid Finder, 355 for Normal, 370 for Heroic, and 385 for Mythic. And of course, you can do every difficulty, but only once a week. The bosses also drop items called Sanguicels, which are used for crafting armor by tailors, leather workers, and blacksmiths. You start by crafting a base armor piece, and once you do that, you get a pattern for a powered up version of that same piece that takes these as reagents. The 370s need 25 Sanguicels, and the 385s need 250, which seems hardcore, but it looks like Heroic and Mythic mode drop more per boss. I've seen reports of 10 dropping for just one boss, so it's a good option if you have those crafting professions. Speaking of which, crafting can be good in general, mainly for fresh 120s, aside from those epics I just went over. Engineers can craft goggles as always, guns, maces, 
Blacksmiths can make armor and weapons, of course. Jewel crafters, amulets, and rings. So make sure that you train those up if you have them. PvP is also a method for gear, if that's more your style. You can get it from normal or rated play. Rated gives you higher quality gear, as you would imagine, and the higher ranking you get, the better gear you get. At Combatant, which is 1400 to 1599, you get eye level 350-ish loot, and a Challenger, which is 1600 to 1799, you get eye level 360-ish, and so on. You periodically get loot whenever you win a match. It seemed kind of random to me. Also, another thing you can do is to fill up this conquest bar every week for armor or weapons. You can do this by doing any raided mode, such as arena or raided battlegrounds. If you fill it up all the way, you can return to your PvP headquarters for a weekly chest, similar to Mythic Plus, and get some more gear. You can find your headquarters right here in Boralis for the Alliance, and right here in Ataldazar for the Horde. Otherwise, it's just random and cash drops from winning battlegrounds, raided battlegrounds, or arenas. Here's another chart for your weekly chest. Once again, since Azerite armor can warforge, it's treated a little differently. So, it's a good option for gearing up if you like PvP this expansion. Even if you suck at it. Like me, for example. And, in addition to this, you also have your weekly PvP quest, which you get from your war headquarters. Pretty simple, you get a weekly quest to kill 10 enemies in a certain zone, and in return you get a cache of gear, some honor, and some conquest. It says to also loot an air supply in the description, but the actual quest has always just been kill 10 players for me. So, that's it for the main methods. I did also want to throw in some miscellaneous stuff here near the end. Things that aren't the fastest in terms of raw eye level, but still helpful and worth checking out in my opinion. I mentioned reputation earlier, so let's talk about that a bit more. You have six factions in BFA, one for each of your main zones, which I mentioned earlier, your war faction, and the neutral Tortalans and Champions of Azeroth for both sides. Each of these factions do offer some gear which may be advantageous for you. You can get a 320 blue cloak at Honored with any of them, a random 335 piece at Revered, and a 350-ish piece at Exalted. You level these reputations pretty naturally through story quests and world quests. Another option is an inscription contract, which I mentioned in my 20 tips video. These are made by scribes, and if you activate one, you get a bonus 10 reputation whenever you complete a world quest, so they're very handy. You can pick any rep but your war one, and if you're looking for a recommendation, I say go with the Champions of Azeroth. First is because they're probably the slowest to level, and two is at Friendly, Honored, and the Revered levels, you can return to Magni in Silithus to upgrade your Heart of Azeroth amulet by 15 eye levels each time. So that's 45 total, which is another big source of eye levels. So, very important to level that reputation up. And, speaking of the Heart of Azeroth, you can level this up slowly just by gathering Azerite. It's 2 per level, and you also unlock more traits in your Azerite armor as you level it. You get Azerite from many sources, Dungeons, raids, world quests like I mentioned, rares, treasures, and also island expeditions. These are short three-person scenarios that you should have been introduced to during the leveling process. You get a small amount per run, and more importantly, you also have a weekly quest to gain 40,000 Azerite from these expeditions. As a reward, you get a whopping 2,500 Azerite, and 1500 Honor Bound or 7th Legion Reputation. You can always check this by going to your Expedition table. So it's also crucial to complete this every week if you want to optimize things. And as always, you always have the good old Auction House as an option if you get desperate. Item levels vary wildly here due to Titan forging and whatnot. You have gear from drops, gear from crafting, some are cheap, and some are quite ridiculous. The Dark Moon Fair trinkets seem to be pretty good overall this expansion for every class, so those might be worth looking into. 
Other than that though, just use your own discretion on what's worth buying and what isn't. So you have a ton of options for gearing this expansion. It might seem a little overwhelming at first, but it's not too bad. In summary, for your weekly, you have your world bosses, your warfront rewards, your warfront world boss, at least one mythic plus for your weekly cash, and your raid, which is currently just all deer. You also have your PvP stuff, your weekly island expedition progress bar, and mythic dungeons. For daily stuff, you just have your world quests, your emissary quest, and heroic dungeons if you're at that gear level, so pretty simple there. And ongoing stuff are your normal and mythic plus dungeons, rep grinding either for gear or achievements. You also have PvP, and that's pretty much it. As of patch 8.0 anyways. Whatever you do, don't rush things. This video may come across like you must do all of these things every day or every week, but it's much more enjoyable to go at your own pace. I just wanted to give you the information to do just that. Don't forget that your biggest daily objective is to have fun, so don't stress it too much. I hope you found the video helpful, like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.